Oh, come on. What the? This sitting right next to me here is my 60 watt JPT mobile fiber laser that I bought a year ago to the month and have basically only used it a handful of times. It's mostly just been collecting dust in the background of my other videos. That's going to change starting today. Let's try something I've never done before, and that's an edge to edge full bleed engraving on this brass folding knife. I have a general idea of how this process works, so let's jump in and see how it goes. First, let's take a closer look at the knife we'll be engraving. This is called a Higo no Kami knife. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. I'm not really a knife guy, but I think it looks cool and I'm a sucker for anything brass. To do an edge to edge style engraving, I'm going to need to know the precise measurements of this plate so I can create my design. It's a pretty interesting design. It has these curved ends. It has this nut on one side and a hole on the other side as well as this little cloud pattern at the bottom of the knife. We have to account for all of this when we're making our design template and it has to be to perfect scale. Before I can start designing, I need to create an accurate template of this face plate. I know most people like to take a top-down photo of the item, so let's try that. This looks pretty good, however, it's definitely not to scale. I'll have to figure that part out later. I'm also curious to see how this looks using a scanner, so I pulled out my old Epson scanner and gave it a shot. I think I prefer the scanner result, and I'll be using that to trace instead of the photograph. To create the template, I hop into Illustrator and import my file. Now I have to trace around the exterior of the knife with a pen tool, making sure to keep it as accurate as possible. I also want to make sure to note the location of the hole and the nut on the other side. I'm not great at this process, but I think I did all right with this one. Since it's a Japanese knife, I thought I would do a Japanese theme. I have a traditional Japanese pattern pack of elements already, so I sorted through that to find something for the background. This looks good. Next, I need something cool to layer on top. Let's be extremely stereotypical and do a dragon overlay. Dragons and brass go together like peanut butter and jelly. I don't have any dragon graphics, so we hop over to Midjourney and let AI generate some for us. This is the prompt that I used. A traditional Japanese dragon, Heath Herring style, thick line draft, lino print, cool, simple, aspect ratio 2 to 3. After a revision or two, I found one that I liked and downloaded it. Since I'll need to vector trace this graphic, first I'll upscale the image as large as possible. This helps retain the detail when vector tracing. To do this, I use the website upscale.media. Next, we pop our dragon into Illustrator, run the image trace function, and voila, we have a vector graphic. Now it's time to place my graphics into the template. I won't go too deep in how I did this layering because I need to clean up my own process first. Lightburn wasn't reacting the way I thought it would to my artwork, so I had to resort to hacks that I wouldn't normally do. Basically, I did an offset, pattern filled the background, and scaled the dragon graphics on top. I love the way this looks. Hopefully it comes out looking like this on the brass. Let's take a look at our engraving settings in Lightburn before we get started. The first thing I did was change the outer shape to a tooling layer. I'm not engraving that line, it's just there to help me align the artwork on the knife. The settings I'm using are as follows. For engraving, speed, 1200, power, 90%, frequency, 45, Q pulse, 200, bi-directional fill with crosshatch turned on, line interval, 0 0.025, angle, 45 degrees, with four passes. For my clean pass, speed, 3000, power, 20%, frequency, 100, Q pulse, 200, Bi-directional fill with crosshatch turned on, line interval 0 0.025, one pass. And for my black pass, speed 1000, power 50%, frequency 120, Q pulse 200, bi-directional fill, no crosshatch, line interval 0 0.0025, one pass. In Lightburn, I use sublayers to organize all that information. The laser will run my engraving settings four times, then my clean settings, then my black settings. My goal here is to do a light engraving, clean out the dust, then fill the engraving with black to offset the graphic and make it pop against the brass. Okay, ready to roll. Let's get our knife aligned under the laser. I'm using this XY axis platform so I can fine tune the position. 
These little guys are a must have when doing engravings that require precision placement. Link to the one I bought in the description below. I used that little dog tag to shim the end of the knife up a little bit to try to match it with the other side. It's still a little uneven though, hopefully not a huge deal. Oh, come on, what the heck is this? Well, that didn't go quite as planned. All of that tan yellow engraving that you see there, that's supposed to be black. Um, hmm. It looks pretty cool, but it's not the vibe I was going for. So let me troubleshoot this and we'll run it again on the backside. I think I figured out what I did wrong. I went over my settings again and noticed that in my black pass, the frequency is set to 220 when it should have been set to 120. I fixed the typo and let's run it again. Just ran the updated file on the back, and this is even worse. Um, not only is my alignment worse, but the graphic looks not great. Well, at least it's not tan this time. But you can see that the engraved areas of the dragon, it's kind of muddy, and it's not black like I expected. Let me show you an example quick here. Uh, here's a test I did uh, on a different knife. This is a different graphic that I created, but you can see how how nice that black looks. It's real uh, bright and crisp, and it really offsets the engraving. So I ran essentially the same exact settings on this one, and it came out looking like this. So that's an O for two on our brass knife knife project. This still looks pretty cool though. All right. Well, this is awkward. I'm about 95% finished filming the project and I wasn't expecting it to not work. I figured it was possible that I would mess up on one side, but I didn't expect to mess up on both sides, given that I'd already dialed in my settings on my test knife. I could try it again, but each of these knives costs about 30 bucks each, and I'm not exactly in the mood to buy more right now. But I'm going to publicly take the L and post this video anyway. There's actually a good laser lesson embedded in all of this, and that is getting things wrong and failing is the only way to learn. I mess up all the time. Well, I'm gonna go back and quadruple check my settings, but my main takeaways from this project are as follows. Number one, I love this fiber laser and I can't wait to dive in deeper and do more projects. Number two, if it's possible to use the scanner to create a template image, I will. It works well and keeps things closer to scale. I find it easier than working from a photo. Number three, the Pathfinder tool in Illustrator is one of the greatest inventions in the world and makes formatting your vector graphics way easier. It really saved my butt with some of the layering I had to do today to fit on this knife. Number four, don't be overconfident even when your test projects go well. This whole video is proof of that. And number five, as long as I learned at least one new thing that I didn't know at the beginning of the project, I consider it a success. But I'm still gonna title this video a fail because it sounds better on social media. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.